fathers in here, your children are watching you. They're watching you. They're watching your consistency. My dad didn't have to sit down and say, son, you better be consistent. He never said that. I watched him. And I wanted to be. Amen. 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 And I went and got some braids in my hair and got my long, I had my long, you know, rebellious slinging hair. My daddy didn't want to see me. Don't you come over here with that hair. Look, I can't get no hand clap. He said, you in rebellion. But they said, boys don't have long hair. The Bible say that. Is that what the Bible say? Well, he said, what he said? He said, so if you're going to come over here, you're going to cut it or you ain't coming. I only had it for a few weeks. <laughs> I, couldn't have, I, I couldn't play in any reindeer games. With that. <laughs> but that, that was his consistency. He taught me that. He said, man, it don't matter what, you know, what the world is doing. It's what the Bible says. And we got to model what the Bible says regardless. You don't change the Bible. Can I preach in here? Adamantbeliever.com for and man, while your daddy is living, you better love on him. Because when he's gone, you can't do it anymore. And you're gonna wish you had. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash look at somebody say men at work. Men at work dot P D F. Amen. Men at Work. Amen. Well, let me get through this. Starting off in Genesis, Genesis 2 and 15, the story of creation. You know, you can learn a lot in Genesis. I love starting out in the beginning. You can learn a lot in the beginning because in the beginning, it was the beginning. Amen. It wasn't God's beginning, it's our beginning. God doesn't have a beginning. Amen. He don't have a beginning because if he had a beginning, he would have to have an ending. And there is no ending. So that means there's no beginning. He just is. What's your name? I am. You're what? Am. <laughs> if I was Moses and God said that to me, I'd have been dancing all over that holy ground barefoot. <laughs> what you say, Lord? I am. Oh, hey. Say it again. I am. Hey. <laughs> That's so deep. But Genesis 2 and 15, the Lord God, after he made man, he took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden to work and keep it. So God took the man, gave him somewhere to live. Amen. He lived in the garden. He didn't need a house. Why would you need a house and you naked? Amen. If you just naked, then you can just live any kind of way. <laughs> house is for privacy. He didn't need no privacy because he didn't know what privacy was. So his house was the garden. And he just walking around just in the cool breeze. <laughs> just, just fancy free. <laughs> Because he didn't know. I mean, you don't need a house. You don't need clothes and shelter and all of that if the garden is yours. So God just put him in the garden, told him to work it and keep it up. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, you can eat of any tree of this garden, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil you can't eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. Then the Lord said, it is not good that the man should what? Look at somebody say, it is not good that man should be alone. I don't know why people have a problem with this and why so many men are alone. And the Bible just said that that's not good. And the Bible said it and God said, that's not good. It is not good that man should be alone. So I will make him a what? Yes. 
Did he say he going to make him a boss? A director? An instructor? No, he said, I'm going to make him a helper and the helper is going to be fit for him. So what Adam needed, God made for him. Just like what you need, she's out there somewhere, but you got to make her what you need. She don't know what you need until you need it. But all women are equipped to become what a man needs. In a marriage. You got to leave. Man, you got to say stuff in 2024 you, you, you didn't have to say. In a marriage with a man. Man, you got to just say. Oh. <laughs> but it's not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. This is going to be good, y'all, I promise. When God created man, he gave him three things. Look at somebody say three things. First thing he gave him, a job. The first thing he gave him was a job. Put him in the garden and said, work it. The first thing he gave the man was a job. Second thing he gave him, instructions. This is what you do. Third thing, a helper. She's going to help you do what you do. Amen. 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 It's, it's that simple. It's so funny how these three things literally go against men now. Black men especially. Amen. Amen. Most black men now are looking for a woman to take care of them. So they can go protest downtown while the, while a woman works and pay the bills. Yeah, that's a whole religion of folks doing that. Oh, it's getting quiet. Amen. Amen. Look at him. Look at him. Just just punked out. He just punked. He punked out. Pink vacuum. Vacuum is pink. He wanted it. Our society is working hard to undo what God did for man. But, but changing the natural order and duty of the man mm, changes the purposes and desires of the man as well. When you take man out of what God created him to do, he changes into something that's not what God created. Bro. Men that do not prioritize doing what they were created to do suffer with identity issues. A man they won't work will stay in trouble. Some kind of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Man they won't work, mm. he gonna be nosy, a gossip, yeah. lazy. Well, yeah, he's going to have issues. These issues lead to a life that is counterproductive to God's original intent for man. Before the fall of man, God gave man a job. Before the fall of man, he gave him responsibilities and a helper to give him companionship and love. But if you get love and companionship before you get the job, then it's out of order. It has to be in order. You need a job. Then you need instructions. Then you need a woman. Man, I'm preaching in this place. Look at somebody say, a job, instructions, and then a woman. But everybody get the woman first now and then try to figure themselves out afterwards.
Man, I'm preaching in here. This, yeah, this should have been a video. I should have, this should have been the truth behind. <laughs> oh, Lord. Ain't got a beard, too. You stay at home, dad, with a beard. Okay, first of all, there's no such thing as, no such thing as a stay at home dad. That's a bum. You a stay at home dad, you're a bum. I'll be at the door after service. I tell you to your face. I'm not scared of a stay at home dad. Matter of fact, I, I, hey, I'm not scared of a guy that stays at home while his wife goes out and works. I'm not scared of that guy. So I'll meet you at the door. <laughs> while we out here working. You at home watching stories. <laughs> ain't that stink? Something is wrong with that, ain't it? You know every Tyler Perry movie, word for word, you saying it before they say it. You know all Medea's lines. Because you a stay home dad. Do you know how cursed that is? That's a curse. And if you let your children see that, their marriages will be ruined. The original intent of a thing never changes. Amen. Amen. The original intent of a thing never changes. What God intended for man is still our purpose, even though sin has entered into it. We cannot allow society to change who we, we were created to be. Amen? Amen? Jeremiah says, God says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, and the thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a what? Meaning I know the end I'm trying to get out of you. So you can't change who you're supposed to be. Because God has an expected end for you. Right. Amen. When you change it, you ruin his expected end. Right. What he hoped for won't come to pass. Look at somebody. Well, you can't change God's plan. Well, you can say no to God because there is a hell full of people that told them no. Y'all still believe in hell, don't you? Yeah, there's a hell. So somebody's expected end didn't happen because God didn't want anybody to go to hell. He wished that all men would be saved. The devil has flipped God's intentions and made the man unsuccessful in working, disobedient to God's instructions. And instead of leading, he has become the help meet for the woman. <laughs> yeah, a male help meet. Dude, you a help meet. You ain't no stay home dad. You a help meet. Ooh, when you say it like that, it sounds worse. Up. <laughs> Help meet for the woman. Yeah, dudes, that's what they're out looking for. What you bring? They got t TV shows, contestants kicking women. What you bring to the table? I bring this and I bring that. And then at the end, they have to get the women have to get down and propose to the guy. Yeah, make him her help meet. Yeah. That's the devil. Proverbs 15 and 9, the way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord. But he loveth him that does what? Righteousness. Follow after his right alignment. Doing what is right. 
what God created you to do, who he created you to be. Can I keep preaching this message? Y'all all right? Okay. Okay, stay home dads. Today you just denouncing that. That's what you do. That's all you got to do. That's why the word come. God don't want you to do that. You cursing yourself. And a wife can't, a woman can't carry a man without getting physically sick. You will destroy her body if she carries you. Because that's not God's intention. The devil's plan is to reverse God's order so that men will fail and women will rule. Why does the devil want that? I told y'all that in part 14. How can you spoil a man's goods unless you first what? The devil wants the strong man bound. He's more afraid of the strong man than the woman. Now, I know you Holy Ghost feel woman and you look like, no, oh, the devil respect me. He's more afraid of the man. That's why he went to the woman and didn't go to the man with his proposition in the Garden of Eden. And that, don't, that doesn't diminish who you are as a woman. Man, you don't have a problem with the truth, do you? Hey, man, I can't preach a feminist message in here. We don't, it ain't no woman empowerment message in here. I ain't Jamal Bryant. I'm a man. <laughs> but the devil's plan is to reverse God's order so that men will fail and women will rule. This causes the destruction of the home, the family, and then what? The church. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and do what? Sure. The devil wants to destroy. He wants to destroy your family and the hopes of you ever having a good one. And the way he does that is he attacks the man. Fathers! that do not provide for their families are not believers. Man that don't provide for his family is not saved. Look at that. Not saved. Let, me, let me go over here because somebody, uh, that's a little too, well, no, no, no. You're not saved. You're not saved if you don't provide for your family. You're not saved. That's just it. That's what an unbeliever, is an unbeliever saved? When you save, you're a believer. Well, <laughs> you totally deny the faith if you do not provide finances for your wife and children. All men should work and provide for their families. First Timothy 5 and 8 says, but if anyone does not provide for his relatives, especially for the members of his household, so somebody said, well, it says anyone, but then it says for his relatives, especially for the members of his household, then not she, but he has what? And is worse than a what? That word is infidel in the Bible, which is a pistos. That word means disbelieving without Christian faith, especially a heathen. You don't have Christian faith if you don't have faith to provide. If you aren't provided, working a job, that's providing. Job equals check. Check is provision. <laughs> well, I provide love and I provide. I said, no, no. It's money. Look at somebody that say money. Bring that check home, bro. That's provision. Amen. Love don't pay for nothing. What love got to do with it? <laughs> love, you can't buy, you can't walk in the store in Whole Food and get a whole sack of groceries. And then when you walk out and say, well, why not just give you a hug, cashier, and just, 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 
love on you. I know you got some problems and you're going through some things. And she going she gonna to take it, you know, these, these new folks. And then after she's done, okay, that'll be $46.95. But I gave you love. But you didn't give me money. Provision is money. Man, I've been preaching this message for years. Don't you try to look funny at me. I've been preaching this since the very beginning because this is what I had to do. This is what I had to do all my life. <laughs> Work started at 14 years old. Laying cross ties in the projects, beautifying the projects. That was me. My mama, she hated that job. I was high every day because I was riding with some felons. That's, that's a felony job. That's a felony job. It's riding with two felons. One of them name was Quick Draw. I'm 14. My daddy said, get in that truck and go lay them cross ties. You know, cross ties are the thing that go across the railroad. But they put them in the projects and stack them and try to make it look like beauty. <laughs> the extra ones. <laughs> It would got man, it had stuff flying off of it. I'd come home covered in it, just black. First time I came home, my mama said, Oh no. <laughs> you know I was about this tall anyway. She said, Oh no, 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 no. He ain't going back. He ain't going back. And so that night I said, Yes. Oh, mother has spoken. It's, oh, it's on. It's on. Six o'clock that next morning. Get up, boy. What you doing? I thought. <laughs> Yeah, I thought, I thought I was done with that. He said, boy, quick draw them out there waiting. <laughs> you remember that mother? His name was quick draw. He had braids and beads. You know, they're just making noise. And man, I never asked him why they call you quick draw. I don't want to know. That sound like that. <laughs> and that's who I had to lay cross ties with. And that was my first job, 14 years old. I was working. Because my dad is like, you supposed to be working. Amen. You ain't supposed to sit. You ain't supposed to sit and do nothing. So daddy, they just came out with this new thing called Atari. He said, what, you just sit down and play it? <laughs> you don't actually go play it? <laughs> no, daddy, we sit there. <laughs> Put that down and get out there and do something. <laughs> you know, in old school, they didn't understand video games. So you're just sitting down and just, <laughs> you don't, you're not going to go do this for real? Amen. So I learned at a young age and a lot of men miss out on that work ethic because all you saw was your mom working. Yeah. So you grew up seeing your mom working and that hits a little different. That could do one or two things. Most of the time it just really makes you want to see another woman working. Yeah. And you end up pimping your wife. Amen. You supposed to leave the house before she does. Amen. I don't care what time my job is. You just get up and leave. Just don't be there when she. <laughs> just, just leave. But you worse than an unbeliever if you don't provide. Y'all, that's Bible. Amen. Young folk don't know what this is. First of all, they can't tell time on it. I, I, boy, I could embarrass them, you know. Anything 20 and under. They, it's like, what is that? Who, what, who's counting? What are they counting? <laughs> These kids, they can't tell. Y'all don't know what a time clock is. We used to have to punch a time clock. And they would stamp it with the time you came in. And remember that? that pot, and it makes such a loud noise. You couldn't sneak in late. It, you, it, you can't, it's like a real fist is inside of it punching the car as hard as it can so <laughs> you try to sneak in oh man I'm a little late pow oh 
Hey, aren't you Lewis clocking in? <laughs> Young folks don't know nothing about that, Elder boy. That's a time clock. That means you went to work. And it showed the time you went to work. Amen. And you couldn't call in because you had an ingrown toenail. You had to work with that toenail. Amen. We just ripped the toe, the whole nail off. Just take it off. Amen. Ain't no calling in for no foolishness. I don't feel good. <laughs> the ground was cursed by Adam's sin. So working got harder for men. But working is not a curse in itself. The curse wasn't work because we were given a job, a home, and responsibility before woman was ever created. So before man fell, man had a job. Working got harder, Genesis 3 and 19, and the sweat of thy face shall they eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken for dust thou art, and unto dust shall they return. So here is the curse. The curse is that you're going to die. So the ground is going to yield to you until it's time for you to pay the ground back. And you're going to pay the ground back with your life. That's the curse. That didn't exist before man fell. But a job did. Amen. Amen. And then you have to build houses and make clothes. And you have, we got all this stuff you got to do now because man failed. See, man just covered himself with leaves. God covered him with animal skin. But then they needed a covering to cover that. So they had to start having houses and building this and that. And so it just changed everything. Can I keep preaching in here? Fathers are responsible for taking care of their families. Let, amen. That should have been a hand clap. Women can, accept, can assist because you're the help me. So whatever help he needs, help. But it doesn't change who the responsibility falls on. Help don't mean pimp. Amen. You don't put your wife out there and let her, you at home. No. That's not assistance. Amen. And don't be sending her down to the county either. Yeah, yeah, I lived that too. Yes, yes. I was on food stamp. We, we, back when I was on it, we didn't have a Lone Star card. They just gave us play money. It's like Monopoly money. <laughs> you know, the, the, the Lone Star card, you know, if you got around the machine, you know, it looked like you might have had a credit card. But that play money wasn't no hiding that. You pull that out, oh yeah, that, that, them stamps, yeah, we know what those are. And so we was broke, uh, we had to have food stamps, so I had to get food stamps, so I was like, you know, baby, you need to go down there and sign up. And the Lord said, no, you the provider, you go down there. Take your tail, sit down there in that chair, and get them stamps. You do it. That's the Lord told me. So I had to go get them. I had to sit down there. I ain't had no money, so I'm just looking like ain't none of y'all got none either. So don't nobody say. We all broke. What's up, man? Hey, hey, what's up? We all broke. Ain't nobody got nothing in here. I know none of y'all got it. Nobody got anything to say. We all broke or you wouldn't be here. Don't try to play like you work here. Only women work here. Women and gay guys. If you ain't one of those, you broke like me. <laughs> and so I went down there, had to do it. When we first got married, it was just, times was hard. You know, my wife didn't care. She just, hey man, she knew I was going to figure something out. So we down there and we, you know, doing it, whatever. And then I started making a little money, producing music and making music stuff, getting little checks and stuff. But, you know, I still had to stop. <laughs> stuff was starting to become like the sugar on top. Things okay, but man, them steps is put me over the top. So we just go keep going to get those. And one day the Lord woke me up and said, boy, what you doing? 
stamps. You told me to go get the stamps. I, I'm just going and getting stamps. I, what, it changed? What, so, what? Lord said, get off them stamps. Boy, you're making money. Now, I'm blessing you now. Get off the stamps. I said, but Lord, it's, they, they, they put me, you know, <laughs> they put me right there. He said, okay, so what you getting in stamps? Give out of the money you're making. Give, you mean give back into our account so we can buy what we would buy with the stamps? He said, no, give it to the church. Pay it to the church. Give offering, and I'm going to get you out of this. And I started giving that amount. And God kept blessing me. That's when I learned how money really works. Money don't work with stamps. Now, if you got to get the stamps, that's temporary. You do that. That's what it's there for. Amen. But don't be lying and hiding your husband. Uh-oh. You know they hide the husband. The law come in there and look for him everything. He's in a cabinet. He done pulled himself in the, under the sink. Now, I think a man is living. <laughs> you know, that's going to reduce the amount you're going to get. Black folks cunning, man. We'll do some stuff for some stamps. But I had to get off of it because I started making some money. But it got me through what I needed to get through. Amen. Amen. But fathers are responsible. Women can assist. But it doesn't change who the responsibility falls on. It's always the man's responsibility. Genesis 5 and 2 tells you exactly that. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name what? What? Adam. In the day they were created. That's why when man fell, the woman is the one that did it. The Bible tells us it was the woman that was deceived. But God didn't call for the woman. He called the man, the one that's in charge and the one that's responsible for all of this. Amen. God holds you accountable, man. You know, if I was preaching this message 50, 60 years ago, we'd dismiss and everybody be like, man, pastor didn't say nothing. Because this is what everybody did. This was taught on the family level. Fathers that do not follow God's instructions will fail, period. God has given us his word and truth, but when a father does not adhere to them, he will frustrate his life and turn away from God's plan for him. That's what you see now, brothers that are frustrated. When fathers depend on women to provide, protect, and be, yeah, that's the top of it. That needs to be the top of your cake if you will stay home dad. That's your cake piece. When fathers depend on women to provide, protect, and be spiritual leaders of the home, they fall into sin. So you can't be the, the, the spiritual leader of the home if you're not, the provi if you're not providing. <laughs> you can't be the protector of the home if you're not providing. They become envious, jealous, and angry, and destructive toward those that are doing things God's way. So now he don't want to go to church. He don't want to come here and hear this message. He don't want to hear this. This message is making him look bad. He got to turn on the stuff that makes him feel good about being carried by a woman. Second Thessalonians 3, 10 says... For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he what? Eat. Why you eating and you ain't working? You shouldn't eat. I have to work if I want to eat. <laughs> Brothers, if you want to eat, you got to work. Manna is not falling from heaven. Quails aren't in my lawn. Have to work. So why are you eating? So he says it was commanded that if 
then he would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you, what? Now, I always thought this was talking about some women somewhere being some, je some, some jizzies. No! No! He's talking to men. That changes everything. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but being busybodies. What? Yeah, a man that won't work talks about everybody. He's in everybody's business. He knows everybody's junk. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and do what? Eat your own bread. But the Bible will preach. Man, I always thought that was talking about some women somewhere just being some busy. But no. And when a man got too much time on his hands, he turns into a woman. Emotional and feeling and hurt. You hurt my feelings. Something about that. Something about being working and man, you know, they're giving you orders and times, and you got to obey it and be there and do this and that. Something about that just man's a man up. Yeah. Amen. But when you just at home all the time and just playing Call of Duty. <laughs> you on the last level. You shouldn't be on the last level of Call of Duty. You know that take months. Y'all, I'm at the final boss. Final boss, you have nothing to do. You shouldn't have a game that you can't afford. Hey Amen. You done bought all the extra skins. And <laughs> well, somebody need to just break in your house and steal your game system. And it need to be the woman that paid for it. Why you sleep, she need to go in <laughs> and just take it to the pawn shop and get some food. Can I keep preaching? Y'all, I know, I know. This is, don't sound like a 2024 message. Weak fathers fail at working, crafting a skill, and determination. Fail at all of those. Because it's a curse. When you won't work, you won't work. You won't work, you'll have the curse of can't work. When you have a habit of working it just and you just constantly can do things to make money, it seems like things will just keep coming so you can make money. Uh, but some, some folk got the hole in the pocket curse. Because of your inconsistent work, you can't ever have consistent money. Yeah, there has to be a pattern. This is the curse that creates narcissist and prideful failures that sabotage their future, the future of their family. Because when you get older like this, you want to make it look like you can do something. And you can't. That's the narcissist. The narcissist is the person that pretends that they are something when they are nothing. Proverbs 15 and 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Somebody right now is grieved because I'm speaking correction. And he that hateth 
Reproof shall die. Yeah, this is your brain when you don't work, man. Your ego, you think you something. You got to act like you something. Then you're a cynic. You try to find something wrong with everybody to feel better about you. Then you're messy. You're in everybody's business. And then you're lazy. Summary! I preached today. I feel like it. You know? I feel like it. I did. I did. Mm -hmm. Fathers, we must get it together. Amen. Fathers, amen. If you got children, man, do it now. Get it together. And it's never too late to get it together. Unless you're dead. But if you're listening to this message, get it together. Amen. Fathers, we must get it together. We must make the necessary changes to please God with our purpose and his plan. We cannot sit back and allow women to pay the bills, take care of the children, and love on us. You expect her to love on you and you ain't doing nothing else? What are you bringing to the table? Amen. You know, God spoke something to me the other day when I was preparing this message and he told me a lot of women aren't married because they are supporting their fathers. I said, what you mean, Lord? He said, yeah, the fathers are, they're giving money and taking care of their fathers. And that's a cursed direction. Fathers, you don't take money from your daughters. You're supposed to be giving money to your daughter. You don't spend her money. Hey Amen. Whatever that bill was, you don't need it. If you need her money, look at somebody. Oh, Lord. Now I done went. Yeah, you'll be doing that. No, that's not your job. You don't do that. Not in that direction. It shouldn't go in that direction. No. And I'm talking about calling her and hitting her up for money. I need my $10. I need this and that. Yeah. And you'll keep that girl single. She'll never find a husband. She won't find the right one. Yeah. Yeah. You need to show her how it goes. Oh, I'm supposed to be giving you something. This is how it goes. Now, I'm not saying she ain't supposed to work a job. Amen. Let her work now. Let her learn to work. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But you got to, amen. You don't be taking her money and buying stuff. Oh, it's quiet in here. We, we're going to have plenty of seats next Sunday, I'm sure. Amen. But you know, I know that old school way where we take all the kids' checks and pay all, you know, that. Well, no, no, don't do that to your girls. Don't take their money and pay bills with it. Don't teach them that early. <laughs> Amen. I got a few hand claps. That's okay. I'm going to keep preaching anyway. I just know the Lord spoke that to me while I was preparing this message, and he wanted me to say something about it so that your daughter can have the right disposition and understanding when it's time for her to meet someone and get married. She'll have the right expectations. Amen. We cannot expect our families to function properly if we are not functioning according to God's purpose for us. If we are not providing, then we are not saved men. If we are not following God's instructions, then we have no purpose. If we are not being helped or assisted by our wives, then we do not have God's favor. He said, the man that findeth the wife obtaineth favor. So she should be there as a helper to assist you. You need her. You know how I know you need a woman? God said it. He said, man should not be alone. I feel like I'm walking really heavy in here today, boy. And it's so funny that this is just Bible 101. Like growing up, this stuff was never preached. 
We just knew it because we saw it in our homes. If we are not being helped or assisted by our wives, then we do not have God's favor. It all works according to God's purpose. The devil knows that if he can get the man dependent on the woman, he will not depend on God. <laughs> Why would a man depend on God? You can't even go to God and pray about your wife taking care of you. He ain't going to say nothing back. So the devil knows if he can trap you like that and make you dependent on a woman, then you're not going to depend on him, on, on God. He knows that if he can keep the man from providing, then he can keep the man from God altogether. He knows that if he can keep a good helper away from the man, then man would be alone and not function properly. So we must get back to basics, doing things the way God intended in order to give our children and wives what they need to live a productive life. God's plan for us gives us purpose, men, so that we can give purpose to them. Amen. Amen. Did y'all enjoy this message? Amen. It's hardcore. I know the whole, the yellow sign, I know that just made it even <laughs> stand out more. I got some scriptures, and I'm going to go through them one by one. Is that all right? Proverbs 22 and 29. Do you see a man skillful in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. Who is that? A man that's skillful in his work. You got to give God something to work with. You got to give him skill. Amen. So that means that you have to work at what you do. And be the best at it. Amen. The best you can be at it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can stand before kings if you have something to present. Kings would just represent CEOs or owners of companies. Yeah. 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 Your skill. What are you good at? How much time have you? The Call of Duty contest, you, 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 you're not going to win that. There's a boy right now while you at church killing everybody. He's 11. You, 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 you won't beat him. You, you won't beat him. <laughs> He's probably, he got the little pocket one. He's on it all the time. You can't beat him. Dudes think they making money off the video game. Proverbs 21 and 20. Precious treasure and all are in a wise man's dwelling. But a foolish man does what? That means you can't save. You should be able to save. Amen. Save. Amen. Man, man, you ought to have some money. Somewhere you can go to. Something piece of money something Proverbs 13 and 22 a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the his children's children that means you should have something when your grandchildren need something amen, amen. amen. but that comes from consistency and getting good at what you do Can I keep going, men? Now, I got on the women pretty good. <laughs> on Women's Day. What day was that? Mother's Day. I said Women's Day. Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah. some of them still roll their eyes at me. Stop doing that, Amy. Stop it. Some of them just, you know, it just the hugs changed everything. Folk just... So let me, men, y'all can handle this, right? Yeah. Hey, Amen. Y'all built for this. Come on. I owe y'all. I owe y'all one. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So you got to have something for your grandchildren. Amen. 
Proverbs 19 and 15. Slothfulness. Oh, sloppy, sorry, Negro. That's black, white, any color. Slothful. Casteth into a deep sleep. You just jive. You deep sleep and it's 12 noon. You're not supposed to be have dried eye crust at 12 noon. But slothfulness casts into a deep sleep and an idle soul, that's somebody that don't do nothing, shall suffer hunger. I do stuff, I do, but you don't do anything that makes money. I'm talking about doing something that makes money. You got all kind of stuff going on and no money. Then you're doing nothing. I know I'm preaching. Man, you should see me on the court, boy. I be just shaking and banging and just, yeah, but ain't nobody paying you. You out there in church shoes and sandals because you can't afford no Jordan. You don't have no money. Get off of that court. On the court, just dribbling, waiting for somebody else to show up. Or if you don't get off that court, it's 12 noon. 12 noon. The middle of the day. Are you on the court? Doing everything but making some money. Go somewhere. Look at somebody say, go somewhere and make some money. Go make some money, man. Let him that stole steal no more. Quit stealing from your wife. Quit stealing from your daughter. I'm preaching. Quit stealing. Steal no more. See, these, these scriptures are specific. Yes. I'm thinking it's talking about just everybody, but then he says, but rather let who? Yes. Him labor. Working with what? Yes. His hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Yes. Finally, Whatever you do, whatever kind of job, put the basketball down and put the joystick down and go do something to make some money. And when you go do it, do it heartily with your heart. Put your heart into it. God, I need you to bless the work of my hands so that this will bless my family. I want to pre- provide for my family. I want my son to see me do it. I want my daughter to see me do it. I especially want my wife to see me doing it. Do it with your heart, man. As to the Lord. And not unto men. Everybody stand to your feet. You know, I'm not the type that judge. I don't judge folks by their income and what they make and all that. I don't know what y'all make. I don't know what anybody in here makes. Nobody. Except me. I don't know. I don't know what you make. I don't want to know. You can judge people by that. Everybody's income bracket is different. How people live. All of that. I mean, that's, that's, that's personal. I'm not that kind of pastor. I don't want to know. We don't have a ledger watching your tithe and trying to see if that's 10, 20. Well, I don't do any of that. I don't watch what you give. None of that. I just let you be humans. Hopefully you trust this ministry with your finances and you give them. Hopefully you want to be blessed and you give. That's, that's what we do. But I do know curses come, especially in upbringings. Saw the wrong thing, raised differently wrong uh, you know wrong way to be raised or told the wrong things got a bad understanding of it saw it the wrong way whatever the case I know those things happen and those things can cause a generational spiral down because no one took care of it you need one thing to get out of that 
Whatever it is that's inhibiting you from making money, from, from, from being consistent, all that, whatever it is, you just need one thing. You need God to bless the work of your hands. We got some brothers in here that went from zero to being very successful because they listened to their pastor and they prayed the prayer for God to bless the work of their hands and their hands have been blessed ever since. And when you see God doing that with your hands, it puts a consistency in you because you want to keep seeing that. Yeah. That, that's, that's for real. Well, I, I could pass the mic in here and some brothers will tell you how God did that for them because they prayed it. But I want to pray it with you too. Whoever you are, for God to bless the work of your hands so that your family can be blessed by your efforts. That's you, man. Come on up. This is for the men, fathers, whoever you are. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's in you. God put it in you. See, when God create, created man, he put what you needed in you. We just got to make sure that there's nothing holding it back. We're going to come against every spirit. We're going to come against every devil that's in the way. We're going to come against all the sorted upbringings and dysfunction and just all these different things that you may go through as a, as a man, things that you may go through, gone through in your life, whatever the case. Break it all off. It's got to come off. God wants to bless you. This ain't no insulting message. God wants to bless you. Amen. Amen. He wants what he put into you activated. He wants, and when I say bless, and when I say, you know, because the Bible tells us that it's God who, who, who makes us wealthy or gives us wealth. He's not talking about riches or excess. He's just talking about the ability to produce so you can provide. That's wealth. God don't look at money like we look at it. So he's just going to give you, he just wants to turn that ability on in you. Because for some, it's turned off. It got turned off by trauma. Got turned off by, you know, your father leaving the home, not being in the home, not properly raising you, whatever the case. Or you watching your mom, whatever the case. Don't matter now. God wants to free you up so that your finances can come through your hands. Provision, taking care of what you're responsible for. Amen? Amen. Amen. And you got to, you know, sometimes you got to swallow. That's the thing about altar call. You got to swallow your pride about altar call. You're going to let pride keep you from coming up here, then keep the curse. Well, I don't have to go up there. Okay. Amen. I'm coming up here. Because even if I got something, I want more. I want to be free. Amen. I want as much as God has for me. Everything. Every penny, every quarter, every dime. I don't want the devil, the cake of worm, the, the allosaurus, whatever it is. I don't want nothing taking my money. All the money God has for me, I want. And I want my ability to be able to produce it so he can get all the glory for it. That's what this altar call means. All you're doing is coming up here, giving your gifts to God and saying, hey, get the glory. Get the glory. Get the glory. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for these men. God, I thank you for just their hearts and their desires, God. Their desires to do better, be better. Their desires to walk in what you have for them. Father God, I remember like it was yesterday, Lord, when I couldn't rub two nickels together. Money just seemed like it was running from me I couldn't be consistent couldn't keep a job couldn't God it just wasn't working and you blessed the work of my hands and you told me that it comes from you you are the one that orchestrates finances and wealth it comes from you and so God I pray that you will give the same thing to these brothers that have come Show them how money works and show them how it works through you. Show them, Father God, how you can bless their homes, bless their wives, bless their children, bless their finances. Father God, so that they don't even have to struggle. Just be faithful and you'll take care 
of the rest. God, I thank you because your word is true. And I thank you for each and every one of these brothers that have come. Every man that has come. God, unlock provision right now in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands, brothers. Unlock provision. Father God, we break every curse, every financial curse. Father God, any word curse that was spoken over them that messes with their finances, anything that was done to them, Father God, that delays their finances, anything, Father God, that they may have heard or seen, Father God, that blocks their consistency, blocks their desire to be a provider. Father God, whatever it is, we cancel every evil spirit that has come to hinder their financial progress. And Father God, God, we speak blessings over them. Every curse is broken. We speak blessings over them. Their finances will be blessed. Their homes will be blessed. Their children, their wives, we speak blessings in the name of Jesus. Now open up the windows of heaven, Father God. Pour them out blessings that they won't have room to receive. And they will give you all of the glory and the honor for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let me tell y'all something. You know, consistency starts with giving. It just does. You know, y'all know I'm not a money hound. I don't get up here and, you know, I don't do none of that goofy stuff but I do give consistent giving that's the first step change that make it consistent consistent giving and consistent coming amen no matter what I'm coming I'm coming and I'm giving right all right come on hug somebody say God is gonna change my finances God is changing my finances. I promise you. I wait on the emails. I know. I know it works. I know it works. I know it works. And women, you ought to be clapping just because we had an altar call full of me. Amen. You know, when men can just come to the altar and...